Welcome to Speculative Sandbox. This is Vicki Lawn, and I'm going on a short hiatus to work on book revisions, but I've asked my fellow author friends to take care of the podcast while I'm away. Don't forget to subscribe or follow Speculative Sandbox on Instagram and X, formerly Twitter, to get episode notifications and upcoming news. I look forward to chatting again soon. Hello and welcome to this author takeover, special edition of the Speculative Sandbox podcast. I am your host, Vanessa Thurgood, author of the Comstock Chronicles. Today, we're going to dive into a trope called Deals with the Devil. And as a caution, there will be spoilers ahead. The concept of this trope originated with the legend of a 16th century German scholar named Faust, who made a living off of snake oil-like schemes to get rich. As the legend goes, Faust became unsatisfied with his life, so much so that he summoned up a demon by the name of Mephostophilus and offered his soul in exchange for power. The demon agreed, giving Faust everything he desired. Yet when the demon returned and demanded payment, the German scholar was faced with the fact that he lost everything he had gained and so much more. This might sound like a familiar plot point if you like horror films or books, and the titles for these stories can be as blatant as The Devil and... dot dot dot, or more subtle, such as The Tale of the Picture of Dorian Gray, where a young man trades his soul for a painting that will keep him young forever. He hides the portrait away so no one will know the truth, and as the years pass, the portrait changes as it takes on the consequences for his heinous behavior. Ultimately, Dorian is faced with the fact that he has become a monster. This trope is also very common in Dracula origin stories, which tend to explore the myths of Vlad the Impaler, a Transylvanian prince who lived a life of paranoia and massacred hundreds of people. This trope has even found its way into a country song called The Devil Went Down to Georgia, where the devil comes to a musician named Johnny and offers him a golden violin if he can prove that he's the best fiddle player there ever was. If Johnny loses, the devil would take his soul. However, this trope isn't limited to the horror genre, or even country songs. It can also be found in many other genres such as space fantasy, epic fantasy, Greek mythology, classics, historical fiction, and young adult dystopian. The most famous example in the space fantasy genre is possibly Anakin Skywalker and Senator Palpatine in the Star Wars franchise. Senator Palpatine befriends young Skywalker and discovers his forbidden love for Padme Amidala. Palpatine offers Anakin a way to save Padme when the Jedi has a vision of his wife dying in childbirth. The choice to join Palpatine ultimately turns Anakin into Darth Vader, the notorious Sith Lord of the early Star Wars movies. His wife Padme still died, and Anakin lost himself to the dark side of the Force. A young adult dystopian example comes from The Hunger Games. Katniss Everdeen is offered a deal to become the face of the rebellion by their leader, Alma Coyne. Katniss accepts, thinking this is the best way to help her family. Only later does she realize she's been a tool in Coyne's hand just as much as she has in the hands of President Snow. Oddly enough, we even find this trope in Disney movies, where the Little Mermaid, Ariel, makes a deal with Ursula, the sea witch, so she could become human and live on land with the man of her dreams. Ariel gives up her treasured ability to sing by giving the sea witch her voice as payment, not realizing there was more to the contract in the fine print. When the real payment comes due, Ariel is nearly made into a sickly creature destined to live in Ursula's sea garden forever. Yet through the help of her friends and family, this fate is avoided. In the classic realm, this trope is demonstrated in the story of Rumpelstiltskin, who spins straw into gold for the miller's daughter in exchange for her firstborn child after her father gets caught lying to the king of the land. In all of these instances, there is some type of magically binding contract or crooked deal between the exploiter and the main character. There will always be a price to be paid, but that price can vary from story to story. And this trope can also fall into what's called a leonine contract, which is when the exploiter offers a deal to the main character who is in dire straits with no other option and generally little time to think. What really makes this trope is the fact that your main character, whether that's your protagonist or antagonist, wants something and they want it bad. And these desires can range from anything like wealth or power, influence, revenge, love, health, or in the case of my third book, The Queen of the Night, freedom. Then as they are pondering on these desires, 
along comes either a literal devil, a devil equivalent, or some kind of exploiter. And they see an opportunity to get something they want, and so offer a deal to your main character. The main character will either jump right at the opportunity, accepting the contract without thinking about the consequences, or the exploiter might give them a little bit of time to think about this decision, and somehow they will make that situation for the main character worse behind the scenes than it ever was before, bringing them into those dire straits I mentioned earlier. At this point, the main character may feel like this deal is their only option. Now these characters may enjoy their power, wealth, revenge, or freedom for a short time, but the bill will always come due, and the price is steep. In the horror genre, this tends to be the main character's soul. In other cases, it could be a life of servitude for them or their loved ones, or something that they hold absolutely precious in their life. Now when this contract comes due, the main character may decide to fight the exploiter because of the consequences for the choices they've made. In the case of an antagonist after power, this only serves to perpetuate their downfall. Their own choices will destroy them, and they'll discover that the one who made the deal has suddenly vanished, leaving them high and dry. Others may try to fight the consequences and gain back their normal life. Depending on the genre, it is possible for the protagonist to gain back what they'd once lost, but it would be hard earned. In other cases, the one who agreed to the bargain may have no desire to get out. This tends to come from more of a motive of revenge and serve as a tragic character arc. If it's their soul on the line, they give it up willingly. In my story, I use this trope as a means to get my main character to willingly aid a dragon in his quest for destruction, despite how it goes against everything she believes. This trope can also be turned on its head by the main character refusing to take the deal offered, or they could even be the ones offering the deal to someone else. Get creative if you decide to use this trope in any of your future works, and put your own twist to it. With all the examples that I have shared today, what has been your favorite? with deals of the devil. What's your favorite example of deals with the devil and how can you use it in your next book? There are so many different ways that you can take this trope and I look forward to hearing about new and exciting ways that this trope can find its way into your next work. To learn more about me and my books, you can find me at vanessathurgood.com or on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for tuning in today and listening to this author takeover of the Speculative Sandbox and I wish you the best of luck in your writing journey. Speculative Sandbox is a volunteer-run podcast that relies on the collaboration of fellow creators like you. Join the conversation and participate in fun polls and questionnaires on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Interested in being in a future episode? Our DMs are open, or you can email speculativesandbox at gmail.com. Thank you.